is a National Bernie delegate, the co-founder of the Muslim Delegates and Allies. She's a founding member of the Women's March of Los Angeles, a former fundraising coordinator for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in USA and Australia, and a fundraising coordinator for Oxfam America in Los Angeles. Anya, it's great to have you with us. Thank you, Nick, and uh, it's an honor to be here. Okay, I got the um, mic uh, with you and fixed. the rest of the amazing speakers. Um, when we talk about war, uh, we must uh, first recognize that Black Lives Matter have long been under assault in this country, and we support the peaceful protests sweeping the globe from Los Angeles and Washington to Sydney to Rio de Janeiro, fighting for justice and equality in the face of a systemic brutality. Jacob Blake fighting for justice um, uh, is able to still fight for his survival, unlike Freddie Gray, Brianna Taylor, Eric Garner, um, Philando Castile, Castile, Sandra Bland, and the many more heartbeats that have been silenced. In witnessing the domestic unrest uh, right here in the United States of America, I can't help but face my own affliction as a child of war in Iran. Our homes were without electricity, our windows taped so the glass wouldn't shatter from explosions, sirens that often interrupted our television programs, sounding the alarm for families to seek shelter in basements as Iraqi planes flew over the blue skies of Tehran, my third city. Mothers mourning the death of their young sons fighting in the borders of Iran, and my own grandmother who clenched her rosary bead, praying, holding my small hands in hers, asking God to protect her children and granddaughter, me. Little did we know that the Iraqis we were taught to fear were our sisters and brothers sharing the same wounds and trauma. Now it is time to link the Black Lives Matter movement with the peace and justice movement. To shout, demilitarize and defund the police, but also defund the military as protesters march against the intersection between militarism at home in the form of tear gas, rubber bullets, armored vehicles and the deployment of unarmed, unmarked federal troops to snatch citizens off the streets with militarism abroad characterized by regime change, U.S. counterinsurgencies in decade-long trillion-dollar occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan and extrajudicial drone warfare, a history of Western colonialism followed by brutal sanctions, occupation, and destabilization efforts are the overwhelming cause of the surge of hundreds and thousands of refugees flooding across European borders today major, major European NATO powers continue to collude with the U.S. imperialism in each war. Massive numbers of displaced refugees are migrating from countries that are victims of the U.S. military and its allies' aggression, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Libya, Syria, and Palestine. Not one of these conflicts can be justified under humanitarian purposes. Yet each of the source of the enormous profit in the form of private military contracts for American and European corporations. Now it is the time to demand an end to state sanctioned violence targeting human beings for the color of their skin, be it those who cross our borders, refugees of US intervention in Latin and Central America, or those who are not citizens of the United States, born from Native American genocide, in a country built on the branded backs of, America, of African slaves. Now it is time to declare an end to the failed and inhumane war on terror, repeal the authorization of US military, failed and inhumane war on uh, 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 military force that green lights US aggression anywhere, anytime, to link Islamophobia with the scapegoating of Muslims at home, to a foreign policy that sanctions drone bombings on multiple majority Muslim countries. The cost of this institutionalized violence at home and abroad is tremendous. Tragic health outcomes for people of color, fearful of walking, driving, and sleeping while black. 20 soldiers' suicides on an average day for those returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. According to a 2016 analysis from the Department of Veterans Affairs, national outrage and polarization with members of armed militias reminiscent of fascist Germany's brown shirts killing Black Lives Matter protesters in the streets of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Just as the cost of policing in major cities like Los Angeles and New York City 
can account for over 50% of general fund, the U.S.'s 700 billion military budget, more than the military budgets of the next eight countries combined, subsidizing 800 military bases in over 80 countries, cost the taxpayers 54 cents on every discretionary dollar. Meanwhile, rampant ill treatment of our, treatment of our homeless stains our souls. Indebted college students live in poverty and our fire department holds pancake breakfast to raise needed funds. It is not enough to demilitarize the police. We must also demilitarize our approach to a foreign policy that is consistent, consistently the cause of violence around the world. Defund the police, defund the military. Let us move forward with this peace movement. Thank you.